Hello Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest. As always, thank you for watching. In my ongoing desire here for 2017 to help people who are running maybe Windows or Mac who have interest in Linux, you know, I've just got this desire to help people realize that you can move over to Linux, which I think is a far superior operating system. So obviously I do or I wouldn't be, uh, you know, doing doing this uh, video channel or this video today. And you know, I know for myself, uh, years ago, one of the big roadblocks for me for Linux was there was really no good Microsoft Office support. Yes, you could go through Wine and, and get the oldest version of Microsoft Office set up and installed after really a struggle, and sometimes it would be successful and sometimes it would not. It's not the ideal way to do it. Now, there are some options out there. And I've had people say, hey, what's the easiest way to get Microsoft Office installed on Linux? Well, uh, Code Weavers, and we'll go ahead, and I should have had this pulled up here. Code Weavers, to me, is the easiest way, if that is your ultimate goal, is to install uh, you know, Office onto Linux. Code Weavers, I think, is the way to go. Now, there are going to be people out there who say, no, Rob, you can do this. You can do this through Wine. What I'm talking about here is uh, an easier way for people who may be new to Linux, not someone who can, uh, you know, go in and write a script and get wine and get everything all set up, you know, all hunky dory. So I want to point out Code Weavers, but Code Weavers is an expensive way to do it because you still have to have your Microsoft Office disk or you know the download with the key, and then Crossover is a subscription base so um, you know you're going to be paying I think it's $39.95 a year I'll have to go back and look which is not you know it's it's not outrageous however um, there are some other options and I believe that Office 2013 will run if you go up here to what runs and um, we'll say for Linux well let's see here there was an area of what runs. Let's just go to top 25 list and see what they have there. Let's go to voted. So you've got 90 votes that Microsoft Office 2013 runs. Now I myself is in, have installed the trial and I've installed Office 2010 which I have a, a disk of and got that to install and for the most part it ran just fine. Um, I have a crash from time to time you know with Excel primarily. Anyway so that's an option. But then it dawned on me there are some other options out there that may be simpler and these may not be for everyone. Now I'm going to warn you right here if you don't want to see Microsoft or anything about Microsoft or hear anything about Microsoft now's your chance to run. So Because so, we're going to talk about Microsoft and Microsoft Office some coming up. So um, one of the things that Microsoft has started to do with their software is they've started to move to a subscription model and they've done that with Microsoft Office and I'll tell you I've had it for a couple of years here the subscription for a couple of years for my business and I don't use it often but there are times when I go to it now you've got some great alternatives in Linux and I've got other videos that uh, go through LibreOffice which is a terrific alternative for an office suite that is absolutely free. You also have WPS Office which I have installed now uh, which is a good option as well. But let's face it there are times when you may get a document that absolutely does not format well in either of those Linux office suites. They just simply don't. And in those cases, I'll log in to my Office 365 subscription and I will open up the document and nine times out of ten, it formats just as it should. Now, this is an inexpensive way to have the pretty full Office suite um, without having to actually install it. Now, I want to point out a few things here. You'll notice on my panel, I've got a shortcut for Microsoft Excel. A shortcut for Microsoft Word. You'll see it here as well on uh, my favorites bar. And then if we slide over here to Office, you'll see WPS uh, Office Suite, but you'll also see Word and Excel here. 
And so I want to go through how this is set up using Office 365. Now, again, this may not be for everyone, uh, and some of you may already have an Office 365 subscription, but I, I just want to take a minute to point this out. If Office is a roadblock and one of those main reasons for you why you just feel like you can't give Linux a try, this may be a pretty good solution, and it's not that expensive. Well, expensive is relative. So I think this is $9.95 a month, which gives me five installs on Android tablets and uh, computers, PCs. And um, plus, you get access here to uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, Sway, uh, OneDrive. You get added storage and that kind of thing. So it's really not a bad deal when you consider that if my family were now running um, you know Microsoft uh, systems I could install up to five PCs for that same $9.99 uh, subscription price so really not a bad deal but again I'm not here to praise Microsoft on their business model or anything like that my ultimate goal is to show you how to interact with Office 365 and give you the feel that you are running Microsoft, a kind of, or, or, excuse me, running the Office suite, almost feeling like you're running it resonant within Linux. And we're going to do that through a tool called ICE or ICE SSB, which is, um, is a way that you can put Microsoft Office 365 in a window and give you more of a feel that you're running an application. So let's kind of let's kind of go through the process. And I, again, I'll point out to you here that I've got you know Office set up, and and so I could launch from here, here, or here. And so I'm just going to launch into Excel here and give you an idea of what it looks like. So we're going to launch right in, and I'm just going to open up a document online. Now, if you've got a slow internet connection, this is not going to feel very fast, and it's not going to feel like a resident office suite installed on your Windows machine. Well, it could because it's Windows, and it tends to slow down. But anyway, so you see here kind of a really familiar uh, tabbed interface that allows you, for the most part, to, um, to go in and work with Excel as if you loaded it up on your system. And uh, another nice thing really and truly about the subscription model is Microsoft in the background uh, can update the Office Suite. You don't even know it's happening and they can um, add features and things like that in the background so that when you uh, go in from one day to the next and you launch into uh, the Office Suite you may see new features or um, you may see improvements or notice improvements, um, but most of the time you don't even know it's happened. So uh, it's not all bad. And if this is kind of like I described earlier for me, where you really you don't have to use Office all the time, you you know you you could use Libre or you could use WPS, but on occasion you need to go in and have access to a particular document because of formatting or something of that nature then this is going to work for you but you don't want to have to just log in through your browser well let me back up because that's what we're doing we're just doing it in a different way we're doing it in a way that looks more like an application and allows you to control things like an application and it allows you to put favorites with the icons on there and so really it gives you that perception that you are. Uh, and sometimes perception is all you need. So, how do we get all this set up? Well, it's really not difficult. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do in this uh, ICE SSB is um, it's available if you're running uh, an Arch-based system. It's going to be available either through your normal standard repository or it would be available through the AUR. Now there's another distribution, well there's a couple of distributions, uh, but one that comes to mind that includes ICE uh, set up and pre-installed 
is Peppermint OS. And Peppermint OS is a very nice distro if you've never tried it and you're interested in working with ICE to set this up the way I'm showing you then Peppermint OS would be a, a very good option for that. And there are other distros with ICE pre-installed as well. But anyway, I want to move on here because I want to step through the process of how to get this set up. And again, I know that there are many of you Linux users out there who, you know, you've been around the block and, and you know exactly what this is and you're like, really, you're doing a video on this? This video, I'm sorry, it's really not for you. It's for that person out there who really doesn't have a full understanding of of Linux and what all's in play, but they've got interest. Um, that's who this is for. So anyway, all right. So I purposely left off publisher. You know, typically those are the three you see: Word, Excel, Publisher, or or excuse me, PowerPoint, not Publisher, PowerPoint. Um, and so what we're going to do is go through the process of how to set this up through ICE and uh, add the icon and, and uh, so on and so forth. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move over to PowerPoint. And what you want to do is you want to right click in the URL up here and you will copy that URL. We'll go ahead and minimize this now. And then you're going to launch ICE. And I've already got that open so we'll go in here to Internet. ICE and you're going to have an option here to name the application. Well, if I could spell, so we'll call that Microsoft. Yes, I spelled it correctly. <laughs> Microsoft PowerPoint. So that will be the name, and so that's going to be the name that'll pop up once you hover over the icon. The next thing you want to do is that URL that we copied, you will paste that right here. And then where in the menu, that means you're going to have an option to choose Office because you'd want that icon to show up in your Office suite just like it would if you had installed it. Now you're going to have two other options here. You can select an icon or you can use the favicon. Now, Sometimes the favicon will, will hold and sometimes it will not. Um, I've had mixed results there, but if it does not, we've got an option that I'll step through. So if you click on Use Favicon, it's going to go to the web, to that URL, and it's going to pull in uh, the most recent icon, which you see there for PowerPoint. Now, you've got some options here. I've got Chrome and Chromium and Firefox installed and maybe you're asking okay why would you have all three installed really I, I was kind of experimenting to see uh, what uh, browser runs best with Office 365 and in my case it turns out that for whatever reason Firefox seems to run better with Office 365 certainly better than Chrome and I know there's not you know tremendous differences between Chrome and Chromium but Chrome didn't do very well. Chromium did a little better and Firefox absolutely did the best. Um, so here we're going to choose Firefox and we're simply going to click apply. And then you can close that out. So next you're going to go into your uh, application menu and we're going to look for and it may take it a minute to populate and there it is you see Microsoft PowerPoint but you'll notice here okay the icon did not hold so what we're gonna do is we are going to apply the icon now the way you can do this is you could go to uh, you know your whatever browser you have set up and you could do PowerPoint icon do a search and you're gonna want a PNG there's a couple file formats but PNG works well um, so you see icon archive there and that is a PNG so you can simply right click and save that image and we're going to put that I think I've, yeah, I've already saved a few here so we're going to put that in our folder where we know it is and you can close out that window now we're going to go over and you're it's going to it's going to vary for you some here uh, so this happens to be the KDE desktop and so your application may application launcher may look different your setup may look different but but at any case once you go in there and you find the program 
typically you can right click and edit the application so we're going to do that there and then we're going to choose let me go back so you see here this is where the icon would typically be you would simply click on that if you're within KDE and you could search through system icons but that's that's not where you're going to find it you're going to find it where we saved it so we're going to click on browse and then I'm going to go to the folder where I saved that so that's why it's important to know you know where you saved it and we're going to choose PowerPoint and then we'll go ahead and click apply now if it did what it was supposed to we'll go back in and it didn't <laughs> it didn't do it alright so now there's another way to do that within KDE we're going to right click on the K and we're going to go to edit applications and then we'll find that there Microsoft PowerPoint well it shows it so let's try it again sometimes sometimes it doesn't like let's try this one let's see how many do I have alright we'll try this one and see if that makes a difference so once that uh, icon is in place you click save it should update the system now let's go back in and there you have it so it applied this time so I'm gonna right click add that to the panel alright did I did I misclick maybe I did add to panel there we go and now we've got our shortcut now it's a little off from these other two but you get the idea and then if you want to add that to a favorite you can do that add to favorites so we have it here now and now I'm gonna close all of this out and um, there's Excel that we had open and for the most part you're gonna get the feel that you've got Microsoft Office installed and when you launch you're gonna launch into well okay in this case it's gonna ask me to sign in one time alright so I'm not gonna sign in but I'm gonna back up here and just say when you launch you're gonna launch into what feels like um, the office suite and again if your internet connection is slow um, you'll notice there's gonna be some delay in the document loading and that kinda of thing and you may notice that some of the interaction is not as fast as it would be if you had you know LibreOffice running uh, but I gotta say there have been times where you know back in the Windows days where I had Microsoft Office installed and uh, you know there was an Office update or something like that or a Windows update and I went into launch Office and it took forever to load and you know it's not exactly always been a speed demon installed on Windows so um, anyway definitely wanted to point that out for the most part you can go in and you know, edit your document and, and do everything that you normally would you know with uh, with office so I know this isn't a solution for everyone it could be cost prohibitive um, you know for people and uh, it's not ideal in all situations it doesn't have every single feature that you'll find if you went out and bought you know office and installed it on your system um, but I think over time you're going to find that it will have the majority of features and I think you'll find improvements in the uh, speed and things as time goes uh, because truly Microsoft's push is to go to that subscription based uh, business model and so I think you're gonna see a lot of focus and things over time I like the idea that it's here and looks like it's you know a part of the system now again 97 percent of what I will do I'll do through WPS office and let me just open that real quick so that if you've never seen what that looks like uh, let's go to WPS writer and you'll see here that WPS has a very familiar layout um, you know you've got the ribbon up here and uh, let's just go ahead and go to new blank document so that you can kind of see that with uh, tabbed interface so um, if you're looking for that muscle memory familiar layout uh, WPS office does an extremely good job of mimicking the ribbon that you would see in Microsoft Office and it also uh, will save in most Microsoft Office formats um, but you know whatever it takes to make it work for you this is just one option it's a simple option yes it's a costly option 
but I felt like maybe this would fit the bill for a select few people out there. So I really hope this helps. I know for longtime Linux users and other people, you're probably saying, I can't believe you're putting Microsoft icons on your Linux desktop. But anyway, I felt like um, that this might be something for a select few people out there that helps them transition over to Linux. That's it for now, and we will check you later.